Hello. Good morning. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the, this is networking track number two, that's networking track number one over there, and um, thank you all for moving from the other room if you just did that, but, but also just thank you for coming. Um, so the next four sessions are going to be about, are based upon some work, software work. Um, you can see the t-shirts, SAI, uh, and a couple of different uh, um, initiatives based on SAI, and then uh, Sonic. So uh, we've got software, software going for the next couple of hours and here, networking software. Um, everyone here for networking software? Yes, awesome, great. So I'll turn it over to uh, Shin. She's been leading the, the Science Sonic work within OCP. So OCP networking has sub-projects um, where the, a, a, a community who's really focused on, on that particular work, whether it's optics or in this case, software abstraction interface uh, come together and, and have their own calls, and have their own workshops and sessions. So um, please help me welcome Shin. Thank you, good morning everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to this session. Today's uh, topic will be SAI, releasing the potential of uh, switch ASIC. This is Shin from Microsoft. Actually, I'm presenting the uh, SAI community here. So in a simple word, uh, what is SAI? It is an interface that enables the cheap ASICs to talk in the, uh, uh, from the dialect to uh, using a simple language, common language, to the network applications. What it, in, in, it can enable you? It enables you to decouple the hardware and software, enable you to cherry pick the best that suits your scenario. It also enables you to consume the under least complicated, um, heterogeneous um, uh, hardware easily and fast. It enables you to focus on building a consistent and stabilized uh, SDN applications. And uh, it's a big step uh, forward to open networking. The community actually is growing fast. We have the major silicon companies uh, supporting SAI on their leading on their flagship chips, including uh, Tofino from Bellfoot, Trident Tom Hawk from Borcom, Expliant from Kevin, Golden Gate from Centac, Pristella from Marvel, uh, Spectrum from Mactron, uh, Mananox, and the Terros from the Fields. Besides these um, silicon companies, uh, Dell, MetaSwitch, and Microsoft are also very actively in driving the release and advancing side in the community. As of today, there are six different kinds of NOS or network stack uh, built on top of SAI. They are CNOS from Centac, FlexSwitch from SnapRoute, MetaSwitch Software Solutions, OS 10 from uh, uh, Dell, OPX from OpenSwitch, and Sonic from Microsoft and Community. We launched uh, SAI in 2014. Uh, in, the, in the last two years, the community has been growing very fast. We have 77 members on the GitHub, 48 of them are actively contributing to the code. We had uh, 400, more than 470 commits uh, submitted, checked into GitHub. We had more than 60 community meetings last year. We released the six, we had six releases, uh, added uh, 37 proposals. This is a snapshot of the, the monthly checking on the GitHub. You can see that the community has been working very hard and uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to release the site, to enable the users with more capabilities. So at the end of last year, beginning of 2017, we are proudly to announce Sign 1.0, which uh, evolves from 0.90 uh, in 2014. Um, going forward, uh, due to the increasing demand and the requirement that we are going to do a more regular release, uh, we will release each quarter uh, one sub-release uh, and yearly a major release. 
so the rest of talk is going to be organized that I'm going to invite the expert from all major uh, leading uh, silicon companies to come to talk about the proposals they bring in 2016 and the new proposal coming in 2017. What are the capabilities and the user case that uh, light up uh, by these proposals? So first one, let's welcome uh, Rubin from Kevin. Thanks, Jin. Uh, first of all, thank you, Microsoft, for cheerleading the effort on SAI. Uh, thanks for inviting us to present our proposal and what are our contribu contributions to SAI. So uh, our proposal and uh, major contribution in 1.0 has been uh, supporting SAI in our ASICs. Also, uh, we introduced an enhanced ACL or more optimized operator-centric ACL model in SAI. ACLs, as we all know, the use cases are fairly simple. We use an n-tuple lookup for filtering, drops, uh, forwards, and all the exception rules that you want to use for mirroring, monitoring, what are the purpose security, all those stuff. The real motivation behind uh, this proposal was to uh, make the SAI uh, ACL uh, abstractions really and truly operator-centric. Uh, we all know uh, whoever has programmed a switch silicon, they know uh, if I have to move my ACL code from silicon A to silicon B to silicon C, they all have different architectures. This is a motivation, this is an effort to uh, generalize the ACL model, how you would program an ACL across all the silicons that are supported, that uh, are at the forum uh, in the community supporting SAI. Simple configuration, very operator-centric. So you have an interface, you want to bind an n-tuple to the interface. Uh, that's the crux of the whole proposal. You don't really have to muck around the bits and nitty-gritties of a TCAM, how, where the bit positioning is, where a port relies, it's a port mask or a port ID, all that stuff. So it truly abstracts the ACL programming of an ACL and allows you to write an application on your stack really uh, generic to all the silicon. And whoever supports SAI, we have a bunch of test cases, uh, PTF uh, cases uh, introduced in the proposal, which uh, gives you more of a compliance uh, aspect of it. So what did we introduce? We introduced bind points, uh, which gives you your interfaces. And bind points are uh, an object within SAI model. Uh, so we're leveraging all the SAI infrastructure to uh, define ACLs, how you bind ACLs, how you uh, place ACLs across your uh, network. Uh, we introduced ACL groups, that is more uh, grouping of ACLs across different types of ACLs. It can be a port ACL, VLAN ACL, router ACL, all those stuff are more abstracted across all the silicon vendors. Uh, more importantly, we introduced uh, the behavioral model of when you program an ACL, what is an expectation that from a switch NPU you should uh, get? That is what the behavioral model uh, uh, defines uh, in this 1.0 proposal. Um, there are several, uh, we had several discussions around serial parallel lookups. So the sci ACL model also handles those. So it does not limit any NPU which has its own uh, proprietary or enhanced model of doing ACLs. It gives you a common denominator and then other uh, uh, NPU vendors can enhance uh, propose more extensions to exploit the ACLs. Uh, we proposed uh, ACL cases, as I mentioned. They are pretty much uh, compliance cases, and that has been our uh, major contribution in 1.0. Thank you. Thanks, Rubin. Uh, next one is um, uh, L2, L3, Multicast from Syntec. Welcome, Yao Ming. Hi folks, my name is Yao Ming, and I'm not a basketball player, but a software engineer in Syntec ne Networks. Syntec is a silicon, uh, internet switching silicon uh, company. Uh, we've been around for 12 years, and we have mature products um, deployed in real life cases. In Syntec, there is NOS, actually a NOS based on site, and during deployment of our products, a lot of customers requires L2, L3 multicast for applications like uh, streaming video, uh, 
which is missing inside them. So this motivated us to implement and contribute the layer two layer three multicast to the site community. Our use cases are not in data centers, but the proposal enables the capability of site to support multicast applications in, uh, in, the, in maybe in the data center feature. Eventually, we hope SAI could be a universal APIs for all vendor, for, for all vendor uh, ethics, uh, not only in data centers. Uh, I have only one slide, so that's all for my part. Thank you. Thank you, Ying. Thank you, Ming. So next one, next action two are all from uh, Mellanox. Matty, we are talking about the bridge model and the host interface. Yeah, welcome, Matty. Thank you, Jim. I am uh, Matty Kadosh from Mellanox. So um, what we did, um, the announcement, annou announcement that we have had, sorry, to uh, 1.0, um, we are going to talk about two, two major ones. So the first one is the ability to uh, enhance uh, the multi-tenancy of the network. Uh, so, um, and the benefit by announcing, annou announcing the multi-tenancy of the network is to actually enable, uh, to create an overlay network such as uh, uh, VXLAN technology, but not only VXLAN technology. Uh, increase the broadcast domain of the network by uh, creating multiple uh, or more than 4K uh, layer 2 domain and ability to actually to, uh, to uh, create, uh, in addition to uh, the router port that we had uh, in the previous version, is the ability to create a router support uh, in addition to that. So, so uh, Okay, <laughs> so this is a, a, a picture diagram of a, a very high level one uh, to show you uh, what we had. So actually uh, the legacy one was, the color is not so good here, so sorry for that. So we previously in, 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 in uh, the previous version of SAI, what we had is, is the ability to uh, connect the port to dot one cube bridge. So uh, this was, uh, the limitation was, uh, was obvious. Uh, we can only uh, have a 4K broadcast domain, and the ability to connect uh, uh, a port, this is port two now, uh, to uh, a router interface, uh, creating a ref. So, so what we add uh, is the ability to create vPort entities in the system. So you can look at port three now, and, and uh, port three was, it will be is split here to, to two different vPort. One is uh, VLAN one vPort, and one is based on VLAN two vPort, and then you can actually take that port and, and, and connect it one vPort to a router and the other one to a dot one D bridge. You can create much more, you can create up to 4K actually vPorts on a single port entity. You can create it on a, a, a lag as well. And just to mention that uh, the current implementation is talking about port VLAN, but you can extend it to uh, double uh, tag VLAN or some other uh, uh, classification. This is the infrastructure that we int introduced. So uh, uh, currently the classification part is based on port and port VLAN, but you, we may extend it in the future. Okay, next proposal is uh, about extending the existing host interface. Host interface is, is the ability to send and receive packet from CPU and to CPU. Um, and um, what we added is uh, the ability to create multiple uh, management segments in the network. So um, in the previous version of SAI, what uh, th there was uh, the ability to, to, to classify, pack it to the CPU, classify whether to, to what will be the, uh, the reaction to, let's take an example, a BGP. What will be the, uh, whether you want to trap a BGP packet and how you want to forward that BGP packet to the CPU was a, a global attribute of the silicon. And the problem with that is that sometimes you have in, in, the, in the same silicon, you have two, uh, two or more management domains, such as one is uh, managing by uh, BGP legacy uh, layer three protocol, and another one is ma managed by OpenFlow. Uh, those two uh, kinds of uh, manag uh, management, management domain require different, requ uh, sometimes uh, have different requirements. Um, 
for example, in OpenFlow, you may not want to run uh, IGP snooping, but you do want to run that on, on your legacy network, which run legacy layer two. So what we did is actually we broke, uh, we added the, an ability to, to, uh, to uh, configure those, uh, we call them a syndrome or uh, traps, uh, not, per, not globally in the system, uh, to add a more flexible classification uh, and add the ability to actually uh, uh, break the network into more than one management domain. I think this is the last one. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Matty. Hello. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, 2016 has been fun. Uh, these are not the only proposals that we already have a uh, uh, L2, L3 functioning uh, APIs. These are advanced one uh, we added to proposal. 2017 will be even more exciting. <coughs> we are adding uh, proposals and scenarios in four domains. The first one is monitoring, which is the most important capability for any users. Uh, Broadcom is uh, bringing uh, uh, telemetry and monitoring um, a model based on ball wheel. Uh, Mawil will add on microburst capability. Uh, Microsoft is proposing critical resource monitoring so that you can detect any failure before it happens. Um, uh, Belfort is bringing INT as an experiment track. Uh, from the protocol, protocol side, um, uh, Manolos is going to enable MPLS. Uh, Dell is bringing AO2.1BR. Uh, Kevin will contribute segment routing and open flow extension. Uh, reliability and QS are also extremely uh, important for cloud operators. Um, MetaSwitch is driving L3 fast reroute proposal. Dell is bringing BFD and ECN to beef up the reliability of the network. Uh, we are also uh, enrich the infrastructure part front. Uh, Manalox is uh, working on um, P4 model. Uh, Dell will introduce multi-MPU scenarios. Uh, Microsoft is also proposing capacity, uh, capability queries so that you can maximize your use of the capability. Um, Dell is adding site extension. So, uh, due to time limitation, we will have only five of them coming to the stage to talk about uh, what they are bringing in 2017. Thank you. Uh, so the first one is Borkham from uh, Welcome, Baskar. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Shin. Good morning, everyone. I am Baskar Chinni. I am a principal product line manager at uh, Broadcom. Uh, today I will present um, our proposal, Telemetry and Monitoring, uh, which recently got approved in uh, SAI community as part of 1.1 specification. So before I present the model, uh, let's understand the use case. Data center networks are growing in complexity and size. Automation and optimization are two key priorities for any size data network, data center network. Increased visibility and scalable monitoring are two key priorities or two key important objectives to achieve the higher performance that the data center networks require. So if you take as an example, in a leaf spine network, packets flow from spine layer to the leaf and then they go to the host. When multiple data streams try to reach to a server uh, behind a leaf, no, leaf node, then they could create congestion. A silicon, like a forwarding silicon, like a Broadcom, Trident, or Tomahawk, um, has a MMU, uh, which uh, manages uh, several uh, buffers. And by tracking buffer occupancies, um, you will be able to uh, detect these, uh, you know, microburst congestion scenarios better. And also, the application or administrator will have an opportunity to react fast and take corrective action. So, with that goal in mind. Um, we uh, made a proposal um, uh, leveraging Broadview's buffer statistics tracking feature, telemetry and monitoring. What this feature does, it enables application, it basically provides API to applications to configure and control buffer occupancies. You can register thresholds against buffer occupancies, and if the hardware is capable of monitoring, like uh, you know, if a threshold breach occurring, then you will get those alerts in real time so that the application can take action. 
It also enables you to capture multiple snapshots uh, with very various uh, statistics so that you can, uh, you don't have to capture every single counter, but you can fine tune your monitoring. We are also using existing uh, mirror object to, to transport these uh, statistics to a destination you prefer. And of course, uh, the SAI goal is to provide an abstraction interface, and uh, this can be easily customized to uh, whatever silicon you are looking for. Thanks. So here, um, in addition to uh, the TAM proposal, which is a key building block in SOI, uh, we are also providing Broadview agent. Broadview is an instrumentation software suite that enables you to uh, not only uh, optimize your networks better, it also helps you uh, do several offline analysis, you know, network planning, all those things. So you can contact me later if you want to know more details about it. But specifically here, the Broadview agent runs on top of SAI, um, you know, leveraging the API API provided by the SAI TAM proposal and exports the data using the REST API to the applications. REST is a very application friendly interface, so the application can easily integrate with uh, Sonic, uh, which is what we are working on right now. And another advantage is uh, Broadview comes pre integrated with several open ecosystem projects Open Daylight, uh, you know, OpenStack, uh, Ganglia. We recently integrated with uh, Cord, ATT Cord as well. So, all these things you can directly leverage by simply making use of this agent. And again, you are welcome to contact me after. Thank you. Thank you, Baskar. Yeah. <laughs> Next one is uh, time enhancement for monitoring microburst from Marvel. Yeah, welcome. Good morning. Uh, my name is Vitaly Vognoboy and uh, I'm from Marvel. As we know, the modern data centers are built with ports of 100 uh, giga and a packet processor which process terabits of uh, data. Application in the modern data centers should uh, perform 100,000 transactions per second and uh, a huge amount of information is uh, uh, going uh, on a traffic between uh, nodes in the data centers. So many of these uh, things are going today under the radar because most tools are measuring only things in the terms of the seconds. And uh, today something, uh, can we go previous slide? Okay, so uh, today is one of the main reasons and causes for traffic disruption and loss of packets are what is called the microburst. What is a microburst? It's, a, it's an event when some parameter, let's say the Q length, goes higher than some upper watermark for a very short duration and after that goes down for watermark B. This event we will call a micro burst. Our goal is to add to SAI ability to measure parameters and characteristics of the micro burst which are going in a real network. The parameters are like duration, mostly it's U-burst, microburst duration. The parameters are the longest uh, microburst, the average uh, duration of microburst, how many microburst was, and uh, some other parameters uh, which give the application and in the end uh, to a operator network operator ability to get better network operation in the data centers. And uh, the benefit that the uh, operator can have is uh, understanding what is the source of the conjunction, conjunction to make uh, some uh, correlate between server activities or some problems in the server's application and network congestion, uh, monitoring the network health, and uh, also very important to offload <coughs> the um, application CPU and controllers from collecting huge number of events because this proposal to SAI will accumulate inside the 
side driver these uh, characteristics. Uh, one of the important things uh, uh, we will add here as a proposal is ability to have a histogram of the uh, microbursts. That means how many microbursts were, yeah, that is an uh, example of a um, microburst uh, histogram which shows like the full picture what was going on a micro level in the few or buffers or some other parameters uh, in a real device. Thank you very much and thank you for giving us the make this proposal. Yeah, thank you Vitaly. The next one is um, Belfort uh, Prime. We'll talk about in-band, uh, INT. Yes, thank you. Thanks, uh, uh, Shin, and it's really good to be here, everyone, uh, to talk about INT and uh, having an API to enable and um, uh, use INT features in uh, forwarding plane. So what is INT? INT is basically, it stands for in-band network telemetry. It's uh, the ability to extract metadata or switch state and embed relevant information into live packets. I mean, what can you do with this? The possibilities are endless. I mean, you can get um, visibility like you've uh, gotten it never before. Uh, so here in this picture, we are showing a normal data packet. It's going along its way. And switches that are INT capable, typically these are programmable uh, switches like ours, they can read the INT instruction in the packet and embed the metadata into the packet itself. So as it goes, it goes to the end, and at the end, you can strip this metadata out, send it to a, a monitoring application or analyzing application, and you can get full visibility for that particular packet in the network. So that's how powerful this is. Uh, and what type of metadata you can uh, embed, that's up to the target. Um, we at uh, Barefoot, we, we give uh, quite a few options. So the INT uh, proposal for SAI is basically a bunch of APIs to enable the source, sync, and transit functionality for INT, and also gives you options to pick a few um, embedded uh, metadata that you want to insert into the packet that's extensible. Uh, some of the examples here are like switch ID, um, you know, latency, queue occupancy, uh, timestamps, uh, you name it, whatever you can get from the switch, you can insert. Uh, what are some applications? You know, you can track the full path of the packet uh, in real time. You can get, um, you know, latency, hop by hop latency. You can do things like congestion tracking and so on and so forth. So it's quite powerful. It allows you to see what's happening in the network real time and uh, get full visibility into the network. So we are excited to uh, bring this proposal before the community and looking forward to your comments. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, next one is uh, Mike from uh, Dell. Hey, thank you, Shin. So I'm uh, Mike Lazar from Dell. I'm in charge of the um, uh, platform abstraction interfaces for Dell platforms and in this capacity I'm participating in the uh, SAI API forum. Uh, so our next, uh, our next uh, year activity will, will focus on a number of things, protocol and infrastructure. Uh, the main one and probably the most contentious one is this multi-NPU uh, proposal which refers to being able to aggregate multiple switches from a single vendor so in a single abstract or in an aggregated switching fabric. The idea is that applications which use the SAI API um, are going to be able to refer to that uh, a global switching fabric as a single switch. So there are challenges to that. Uh, it's, uh, it's basically having a consistent API model. Uh, in terms of advantages, of course, like this is the, 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 the benefit mentioned on the slide is refers to, have, to implementing a stack. So that's one of the use cases of this uh, multi-NPU switching fabric. There are other topologies that are available, like uh, essential spine leaf or any or chassis type topologies. But that's sort of, that's, that's what we plan for. Anyway, that's a hypothetical topology that we have in mind. So next slide. Um, so anyway, I already mentioned multi-MPU. We have other, um, 
other protocols on the roadmap. So it to one BR is is one of the main ones. BFD and ECN are enhancements, and they provide uh, re extra reliability. Uh, the other one, the site vendor extensions and site extensions in general are going to. It's essentially it's a it's a mechanism. It's not an API by by itself. It's just a document or charter, which allow us. Uh, to innovate and to increase velocity and to, and allow vendors to differentiate. So we recognize that we cannot have a one size fit all, fits all. So we want to be able to allow people to extend the API with either attributes or objects which are specific to a particular vendor or a particular technology. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. So the next one will come, uh, is coming from MetaSwitch. John is going to talk about um, L3 um, reroute, fast reroute. Hi, um, I'm John from MetaSwitch, uh, and I want to talk about um, Sci and the WAN. Um, so so um, Sci hasn't yet had much impact in the WAN, uh, but the really the, the benefits of disaggregation are the same in the WAN as they are in the data center. So uh, we want to change that. And if you think about the use cases in the WAN, they're all about IP transport of some sort or providing a, a layer two or a layer three VPN service. Um, for example, a data center interconnect or uh, backhauling of mobile or residential or business traffic. Um, and <coughs> the edge devices in the WAN are really good targets for disaggregation because those devices are deployed in large numbers. Uh, they typically have merchant silicon in the data plane. Um, and the operators really want to roll out features to those devices quickly. So um, what's, um, <coughs> what we want to do essentially is uh, we want to enhance the size so that it can be used by one of those WAN edge devices. So next slide. OK, so our first objective in this is to provide reliable transport for IP and MPLS in the WAN. And, um, in the WAN, often it's the case that there's only a small number of shortest paths between two edge devices, sometimes only one. And that's not very resilient to failures. So what the SI user really needs to do is be able to calculate a, a backup next hop for any unprotected paths. Um, and then install those backup next hops ahead of time in the data plane. So the SI needs to be enhanced to allow backup next hops. Uh, but also we need to add the concept of uh, redundancy groups to the SI. And a redundancy group is something which allows multiple routes to have their paths switched to the backup with one operation by the SI user. Um, and when a next hop fails in the WAN, the, the routers detect that using BFD. And um, BFD is a, a protocol that's often accelerated in hardware. So we're also proposing that we enhance the size so that the SI user can take advantage of any BFD acceleration that the hardware offers. Um, and then there are a, a bunch of extra SI enhancements that you would also need to, to enable all of these WAN use cases, and we don't have the time to go into those right now, but if you wait for 30 minutes, then we're going to have a, another talk in here about those and, and drill down on those in more detail. Uh, that was it. Thank you. Thank you, John. <laughs> so I hope you really join uh, this, um, how many capabilities we are adding and uh, how we hide all the complicated uh, um, details from you and present it through beautiful APIs. So this section is an example of how um, all the devices running on different chip uh, on 100 gig uh, line speed um, that can interrupt the interoperate uh, between each other. So I'm stopping here just for 30 seconds for you to fully enjoy it. So we have uh, around 10 switches uh, running on different ASIC uh, or 100 gig and uh, from different platforms. Uh, most of them are running on Sonic. Uh, the other two OS or, uh, is uh, CONS and uh, MetaSwitch. Uh, through SI, they are able to controlling and talking to each other and uh, using the same language. So this is in the Microsoft booth A4. Welcome to have a look. The last size is uh, welcome. Uh, like you can find all the information here, and uh, welcome to join the community. As you can see, that we have a cool T-shirt. Yeah, we have a strong community, 
and we work very hard to enable the scenarios for you. Thank you.